Jay's got his own exhaust system. Whoopie freaking do! The Garden Snake Edition Suburban Delinquent Series here. Thank you, two bros. So cool. The way that works is that if they make an exhaust system for your bike, um, there's a guy, Danny, you can contact and say, look, I want that system, but I want it with this badge on it. Or you can get Sub D's or, or Baker. It's a full system here. I've already taken out the little uh, baffle. It's got it right here on the end. Just need a Torx bit for that. And I did that because I have a feeling I'm not gonna use that. Ooh, they give you a spring puller. Oh, that's a really good spring cooler too. You have a strap, mid pipe, your headers. One thing I did pick up from Yamaha was a set of gaskets. So obviously we know this is gonna make the bike louder and look a lot better, but to really show you why this is better than the stock system, I'm gonna have to fast forward to future Jake again. I really wanna show the two systems side by side, the stock piece of crap and what we've got here. Stock exhaust, big, massive, heavy, ugly. Two bros, small, light, cool. This giant thing is all one piece. Obviously, aesthetically, it looks a shit ton better. I mean, that's pretty obvious. This looks like some Frankenstein patched together shit here. This is some handmade quality shit made right here in the US of A. Made in California, they weld them up right there. In here, you have a catalytic converter. You've got tons of weird baffling. Here, this is a straight through open system. A lot of people think that you have to have back pressure or your stuff won't run right. That's not exactly true. Uh, you need to retune, of course, to run an open style exhaust like this. Um, but there's a lot of science that goes into it other than just making it free flowing. Uh, you know, two bros will take the time to check the diameter of these pipes. There's, there's weird flow rates and things like that. Too big uh, or too, you know, too open will actually uh, decrease the flow rate. There's sort of a neat balance. My knees love this, by the way. This is not high flow in any way at all. In fact, I was even feeling right in here into the top of the headers. This is really boogery. There's a big old weld in here you can fill. This, on the other hand, you can tell they've welded it and they've gone back in. And yeah, I know, I know what I'm doing right there. But it's smooth inside there. Um, all high flow, open baffle, restrictive. This thing gets really hot when it runs, especially with a cat in it. And all that heat rises. What does it rise into is into your engine. I've noticed this thing gets really hot really fast. Um, when we retune the ECU, I set the fan temps a little lower. Uh, hopefully this will help now. I plan to do the coolant another time, but man, I, I can't believe how fast this little engine heats up, even on a cold day in traffic. So this definitely though is gonna contribute to that in some degree. This thing gets untouchably hot within just a few minutes of running. This on the other hand is carbon fiber. It's not only lightweight, uh, it does a lot better heat sort of resistance this and whatnot going on here. Weight savings of like 11 pounds. God, it's really heavy. Um, it's, it's comical how light that one is. It's going to be increasing the airflow though so much that I would say go back and watch the tune video when we reflash the ECU. It's very important. Um, and of course you get this Garden Snake Edition. It'll add three levels of badasses to your bike so should get that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, so anyway, let's get to it. To start with, we'll need to remove the O2 sensor, which is down here. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this panel off so we can actually unplug the O2 sensor. You often see people just twist this thing up a whole bunch and then just sort of twist it back into what they believe is the right number of turns in the other direction. As a mechanic, that makes me go, ugh, I don't like that. It only takes a few minutes to properly unplug this. This is a naked bike, so it's not, nothing's too complicated on it. O2 sensor is held on by a 17 millimeter. One of the benefits of unhooking the sensor is we can actually put a proper six point, or in this case a 12 pointed wrench on it. There we go. Set this away somewhere safe for the time being. According to the instructions that I read about two seconds of, um, this peg needs to come off. It's gonna be somewhat in the way. Now we don't have to completely disconnect everything. We supposedly can remove these two bolts and sort of pull it up, up to the side. So go ahead and get you a little rag and some zip ties. Because you don't want to scratch things, we'll go ahead and throw a rag around this. There we go. This is the bolt that was gonna be in our way. Uh, we'll just take a 12 millimeter here. I'm not gonna take this off right now. I'm just gonna loosen it. There's one on the other side of the bike. You won't need to remove the peg to get to it. You can simply use a small swivel. Take my word for it. It's in this direction. The headers up here are also 12 millimeters. Again, the swivel will be quite handy for this. All the bolts are removed up front. I went ahead and removed the bolt on the opposite side. There's just one bolt left. 
Uh, now what I want to do here is I'm going to put my foot up underneath it here to take the tension off of it. And now I'll remove this last bolt. Like I'm going to use two feet. Because in a minute here, they're going to be the only thing holding the exhaust up. We don't want it swinging forward and hitting the radiator, scratching the swing arm up. All right, there we go. I can feel I'm holding the weight of it now. One of the gaskets fell off, oh there it goes. The other one stayed in. We might be able to remove that by our hand. Sometimes you have to get in there with a little pick. Nope, there it goes. Um, I said a lot of people will say, oh, you can reuse these, they're still good. You might be able to get away with that. You might be able to, but a few bucks you can buy new ones. I would get new ones. I'm using a 10 millimeter, remove these two bolts that hold on the muffler mount. We're gonna reuse this hardware, and you'll install this bracket on there. They provide two 10 millimeter nuts that'll go on the back side. Using a 10 millimeter if you want to remove those other nuts. Doing it from this side would actually be easier. I want to go ahead and stick our new gaskets in. Sometimes when you go stick these in here, oh, like this, they just want to fall right out. They don't want to stay. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small amount of just whatever grease here, some general purpose grease. It's disgusting like you'd expect it to be. We'll put just a dab on the, the ring of the, the outer ring of this gasket. Normally this sort of squishes them and holds them into place while you get everything set up. This will just burn right off. Won't harm anything. Awesome. All right, we'll go ahead and stick the two rows exhaust header on. You're gonna use the factory uh, nuts that you have there. Uh, we're just gonna hand tighten it for now. Finger tight on all the bolts right now. They give you two O2 two sensors adapter. One is a fill-in one in case you're not gonna run an O2 sensor. Sometimes with certain tuners and stuff, you can do that. They'll tell you, oh, don't run the O2 sensor. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to insert this piece and then we need to insert that piece. There's a small thing of anti-seeds right here they give us. I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize on the O2 sensor itself. Let me tell you to go ahead and install the muffler now. This should sit something like that. Yep. Installing springs is always a thing. It makes you do grunty things and stuff like that. There she is. That was the, probably the harder of the two of them. Go on. <laughs> there we go. All right, take your clamp and put it over the mid pipe here. Just push it kind of back out of the way right now. Now we'll work on slipping this on. All right, work our clamp down. Don't tighten that clamp up though yet. We need to leave it loose so we can get everything into position. I'll give you this rubber piece that actually has these cool grooves that sort of sets it in place. It takes a few minutes to sort of lock it all in there, but that's gonna make life a shit ton easier. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, go and spray some WD-40 on this rubber here. Uh, this was the trickiest part, and yes, the internet's going to tell you WD-40 corrodes rubber, and they're wrong. It does not, nor does it corrode silicone or anything else. It's absolutely fine. Just like everything else, don't tighten this 100% just yet. I sprayed WD-40 on everything, didn't I? All right, so this is kind of the first thing. You just want to make sure it's sitting in proper position here. You kind of go across the whole exhaust, make sure nothing's looking odd. Uh, 12 millimeters is what we'll need to tighten this up. Get a nut on the back here. Finish up here with the headers. Sort of stage these down. Don't crank them all the way down at once. All right. Reconnect our O2 sensor. Before I bring this peg back down, though, this is a good time to really wipe down the system. Uh, all the fingerprints, anything you've gotten on it, have to come off completely before it gets warm, or they will leave sort of like stains in the exhaust and make problems. Brake cleaner, contact cleaner, something like that. It's a good. Uh, Good one to use. This will corrode rubber, but it dries really fast, so don't worry if you get a little bit on rubber parts, especially since we're wiping it right back off. Actually, it looks like this first clip down here for the wiring, uh, it's gonna be really hard to get the O2 sensor wire back into that. This sort of repositions the O2 sensor back just to here. It's not a big deal, you can bend that up to take up the gap. And then we'll sort of start it right here. 
I've got it all cleaned up, installed, ready to go, but we need to make sure it's not leaking. And the way I like to do that is I like to just take a rag like this, hold it over the end. You don't have to smash it. You're not trying to like completely stop the exhaust flow. You're just trying to, it's two things. One, you're slowing it down, forcing pressure to other places that could possibly leak. And you're also sort of muffling it a little bit because it's going to be pretty loud, I'm willing to bet. Uh, places that it might leak. Uh, up by the exhaust headers. That's the first place you want to check real quick when it's running. Put your hand up there. You can tell if you'll feel hot air. You can usually hear it. Um, but this is going to get hot from here this way. It's going to get hot up there really fast. So we need to check up there first. Uh, the next place would be this midpoint here and here. And if it's fine at those places, we're good to go. So let's give it a go. Moment of truth. A bit of smoke coming up as it's warming up. That's just the uh, some of the contact cleaner burning off. Yeah, I'm gonna get the police called if I keep doing that. Um, holy shit, it sounds good though, doesn't it? Remember those two rows exhausts like that with my name on it. Uh, and everyone else's, those would be found uh, through a link in the description. You gotta go through a guy named Danny who works for Two Bros. He's a good guy. Damn! Dude, it's too late. We're gonna piss off all the neighbors. And this bike with this exhaust and all the other models we've done, I think it just deserves a whole video of just freaking sound. So I think that's just gonna be the next video. No talk and no bullshit. We're gonna just rip on it, listen to how this thing sounds, and then I'll do a follow-up video talking about all the performance mods. Because we've just done the three things. We did the tuning, the intake, and now the exhaust. Um, and I'm really wanting to see what kind of difference it made. Ooh.